Hi everybody, welcome back. This is part five of the Border Models 132 scale Lancaster build. Uh, last time I finished the interior for the bomb aimers position and in this episode I want to complete the rest of the fuselage. Obviously that's mainly the aft part of the fuselage. Uh, we've got the uh, shells to fit as well to the forward part of the fuselage. I've left those off and that's because I was doing some research into the particular aircraft that I'm representing here which as it turns out is a very early aircraft from I think the second or third production batch uh, and the importance of knowing that is uh, knowing what aerial fit you need for the particular aircraft that you're modelling. Uh, so I've worked all that out and I can drill the holes in these outer skins if you like. The rear fuselage consists of these two very large pieces and there's a little bit of detailing to do on these but to be honest there's very little that can be seen through the fuselage windows. So I don't think you need to go overboard uh, too much and particularly if your aircraft has painted over windows. You could reveal a little bit of the detail by having the door open which I'm thinking about doing. The main issue at this stage in the build if you're following the instructions is that Border tell you to assemble this rear section complete with the bomb bay including the bomb bay roof. Now you might remember uh, from a couple of episodes ago if you've been watching the series I decided uh, to fit the bomb bay roof onto this forward section and that was because of the way that it attaches at the front. If you look back you'll see that it's really only possible uh, to fit the bomb bay at this stage. But uh, if I show you the instructions what border models intend you to do it's this here which is have the completed rear fuselage complete with the bomb bay uh, already built up and the wing spars included and it then moves on to starting to build the wings, the undercarriage, uh, engines and so on. So we flick well forward through the instruction manual and we come to this uh, where by some miracle the fuselage has come together and it doesn't explain how that happens. So presumably Border expects us to have uh, Rumpel Stiltskin working on this overnight uh, and getting this done for us but uh, it's quite an omission really to move from that to that without any explanation and it's my judgment that really you couldn't fit this uh, completed assembly into the nose because of the way that uh, the Bombay attaches here at this point. So uh, that's the job for this episode by the end of which hopefully we've got a complete fuselage assembly. Uh, so that's the plan. Uh, what I'm going to start to do is cut out all the parts that we need for the rear fuselage and we'll uh, work out then what we've got to do next. Okay that's all our parts cut out. Uh, so now I'll try to assemble one or two of them. I don't think there's an awful lot we can do in advance. We'll just put the outer skin parts to one side for a moment. I'm going to have to come back to those because they need some holes drilling in for various equipment fits. So this is the rear floor. This is the tailplane spar. This is the uh, entrance door in the 
open position folded inwards and I think I'll go for that there's a bit of detail to see in the back These are a couple of parachute packs and this is an oxygen regulator presumably for the rear gunner. These are the ammunition tracks for the rear turret but they need to be painted kind of an aluminium colour so I'll leave those off till uh, we've finished the interior so I'm just judging how much of the interior you can see through this back door so a coat of primer first then a basic coat of interior green we'll be able to do a bit of detail work after that so border don't give you any instruction to mask those windows off but I guess the clue is in the clear part so hopefully most people would pick that up but even so I don't think it would have taken much for border to uh, draw your attention to that in the instructions. I've just masked that off by dropping some uh, liquid latex into the moulding it's quite distinct so it's easy to drop the uh, latex in cleanly and hopefully when we peel that off we'll get some nice uh, windows in those turret doors. Here we've got the area around the rear entrance door black base that's Mr Surface uh, 1500 black. I'm not going to bother so much with the forward end that's just going to be painted in plain uh, green straight out of the bottle uh, but I want a bit of variation looking through this door on this side here so that's what we'll do next I'll just mist on some interior green uh, that's a mix I've got of XF71 uh, which is Tamiya's cockpit green but I'll just put a little bit of sky grey in that some XF19 I think it is sky grey uh, and that just turns it down a little bit it's a little bit too green for RAF interior. Okay so uh, moving on if we can with all the rain pouring down outside it's a bit noisy on the roof lights but uh, never mind it's a good day for modelling. Uh, what I'm trying to do now is get a test fit done of the rear interior. You can see that I've painted this in my mix of XF71 with a bit of grey uh, which just uh, turns down the basic uh, interior cockpit green colour from Tamiya. It's just a better representation of uh, RAF interior green and I've dry brushed this with uh, a lighter colour I think it's uh, XF14 to Japanese army grey and that's just enough to highlight the rib and stringer detail inside uh, but I want to test fit it at this stage because when I've had a quick look at this it's a pretty uh, close fit at the back so what happens is it's very difficult to close the bottom seam up here so there's some interference I think of the bulkheads inside and that's no good having that gap there because when we put the bottom plate on like that we get an overextension of the sides of the fuselage at this point so it just leaves an untidy join with this bottom piece so we need to close that up a little bit more the problem is that you can't get access to the bulkheads 
So the first job I'm going to do is just mark off where the bulkheads are and cut a hole in this inner skin. And what that will do is enable me to reach in and just manoeuvre the bulkheads a little bit so that they'll locate properly. So just take the assembly apart. This by the way is the uh, bulkhead with the rear gunner doors in it which I masked off with the liquid latex. That's come off now and you can see that uh, we've got the clear windows in the doors. So you can see without the bulkheads in the uh, bottom closes up properly. So we know that the problem is in this assembly somewhere. So just looking where the bulkhead lies along here somewhere and along here. I don't want to cut the top because uh, through the rear door you'll be able to see a hole in the fuselage roof. Uh, whereas at the bottom here it doesn't matter, it's covered up by this assembly here. Okay, so let's see if that gives us any better access. This kit is so closely engineered that any slight misalignment will prevent the thing going together properly. So even one of these little stringers here, uh, if it's interfering with the bulkhead, uh, the fuselage halves aren't going to close up. So it's still not quite there. I'm just working out what else could be stopping it. <sighs> okay, that's it. Just that little bit of sanding has enabled that rear fuselage to close up. And what I've done to improve that fit is just remove material from this section here all the way around the tailplane spar. And that enables the fuselage just to push in a little bit more uh, into, into the centre of the fuselage. So uh, that's all good. We can start to do some uh, detail painting and get some of this assembly done. These are all uh, Citadel paints that I'm using at this point. So just a base coat and then one of their layer colours just to bring out the detail a little bit. Although in truth you're not going to be able to see too much of this. Maybe a glimpse through the glazing on the rear turret.
These are the feeds for the rear turret. The ammunition feeds, that is. Then the entrance step. And then uh, last, but uh, for the crew by no means least, this is the toilet. <sighs> so with the uh, floor assembly complete, you can just slot that in. To the port fuselage. Make sure it's properly engaged at the side. That's the port side, I'll just leave that to dry. the last thing the door in the open position so that's both of the rear fuselage sides done so the next job is to get this front section fitted this is the bit that I've been working on in the first four episodes and uh, once we've done that we can join the two rear fuselage halves Okay, let's uh, get this together. Now I'm going to get this loosely put into position before I apply any glue. Okay, quickly get the other half on. Now obviously there's a lot to bring together at this point. So that click that you just heard is exactly what you're looking for. And uh, it's a feature of this model that if anything doesn't appear to fit, uh, I can tell you that it means you've got something wrong somewhere because all these little keys are designed to pull the model together in exactly the right place. So again, that snap was because I didn't have this rear bulkhead lined up properly. So it was holding the fuselage apart. Now because I'm concerned about this join holding together, I'm just going to put a styrene plate on there. That improves the gluing surface and it should hold that fuselage together better. 
Now one piece of advice from experience just now is if you're building the kit it might be a better idea to try and join the fuselage in sections so just glue one section like that and then go along to the next one because there's so many surfaces to try to juggle and get straightened up that you're going to have your work cut out if you do it all at once as I've done. Now one thing that I'm slightly bothered about is this box here which is actually the tail wheel. It's not exactly a bay, it's just the space where the tail wheel fits. And ordinarily that's quite a tight push fit into this slot here. So what I'm doing is just opening the slot out so that that's an easier fit because I don't want to force it in and push the fuselage joint apart again. So that's a good fit now. I've got that nice and tight along this back edge. And this uh, lower piece fits in really well. So we'll do that later. There's a little bit of work to do with this before we actually fit it. But I'll cover that in a moment. I'll just check the front skins now just to make sure they're going to go on all right. I don't see why they shouldn't. Got a bit of a gap in the middle there, but that'll be able to be filled. It's flush all the way around, so I'm not sure exactly what's going on there, but it's not a problem. We'll get that sorted out. Okay, just leave that to dry now. Okay, so the fuselage assembly is dried overnight. It's nice and solid. And I've removed the tape, obviously, and the bands and it's dried exactly in line, so that's good news. Uh, what I've done at this stage in preparation for fitting some of the transparencies is I've painted some interior green on these couple of parts around the uh, hatch windows here on top. Uh, and I've also drilled out the last of the optional holes here. This is for the Morse signal lamp just behind the rear turret. This is the early position. I'm building an early Lancaster. Later on it was moved further up the fuselage. And what Border have done here, or rather wingnut wings originally, is marked the holes on the inside with an E or an L. Uh, just to denote which options you need. Uh, but it's also a good idea to have uh, some good references for the particular airframe that you're building because some of these changes were made incrementally uh, over the service life of an aircraft if it survived that long. Um, and you, what you might find is that different uh, modifications were retrofitted at different times. So get some good references. In this case, I've got a really good set of photographs for a very famous airframe uh, that is now residing in the RAF Museum at Hendon. So I've got some good information on that airframe, which is one of the reasons why I chose it. So we can get these inserts fitted now. What I've uh, done is just sand the fuselage joints that I need to. So this small section here, one at the back, but everything else is covered by these upper and lower panels, which is really good engineering. I've done the sanding now because I don't want to do sanding after I start to fit these uh, transparencies because you can get dust floating in if you don't seal every little space up on the aircraft. So I prefer to do as much sanding as I can before I start to fit the transparencies.
So they're a nice fit. They need a little bit of work around the margins, but not too much. Just a light sanding will sort those out. This is the lower plate, and we just need to do a last modification on this one, which is to fit the flare chute, which is this piece here. This is the early position of the flare chute, which was right in the centre of the fuselage. Later on it was moved further aft and it was a much larger structure uh, just inside the uh, entrance door. But uh, this is the early version. Now I think the point of the tube is just so that you're not looking into an open fuselage when you turn the model over. If you're ever going to do that, I doubt it. Uh, but we'll do the modification and cut the hole in the correct position. Then I'll glue the flare chute into position. And then I can come in from the underside with a round file and just cut the hole to the correct diameter of the tube itself inside. I'll uh, leave that to dry now whilst I do a little bit more work on these forward skins and uh, we'll get those on next. So these are the uh, front skins, you've seen these before in previous episodes and what we have to do is fit some uh, windows into these. I've already done the ones in the main fuselage obviously, these are fitted from inside uh, but I didn't show you these, these are going to be painted over with the final scheme but the ones on this forward section are not painted over so we're going to have to get these in now actually what happens is you could just drop them in like that and they get trapped between the inner and outer skins so they're not going to go anywhere uh, but just as a bit of security I'll apply a little bit of uh, white glue just to hold those in position so in this case I'm using some of this Formula 560 canopy glue, just a white PVA basically. Now just a word of warning about these windows. Uh, the plastic that's used is very thin and it's also quite brittle so they're very easily broken. I cracked one of the rear windows but uh, because they're painted over it doesn't matter. But if you're building uh, an early Lancaster with the windows exposed you do need to be careful with this. So they're actually quite a tight fit into the uh, hole in the fuselage. So what I'd recommend with these to avoid breaking them is to just sand around the edges very slightly of the transparency that is and they just drop in a little easier if you do that. But most of all, just avoid the temptation to press in the centre of the transparency. Because if you do that, you'll crack it. That's how I cracked one of the back ones. So just a word of warning about those. When you get them fitted properly, they sit absolutely flush on the outside of the airframe. The transparencies on this kit have come in for quite a bit of criticism since the time it was uh, issued and I think the uh, new uh, iteration of this kit which I think is the Dambuster version 
I understand has had the transparencies reworked by Border. So hopefully they're a bit better. I've not seen the kit, so I can't vouch for that. I've just heard that that's what's happened. <sighs> Apart from the incidences where people got broken, actually broken transparencies, <sighs> I think the criticism is a bit overblown, to be honest. Apart from those people who had broken transparencies in the kit, that's a different matter, but the criticism about the quality of the glazing was I think got a bit overhyped. The thing is that on the sprue you might be able to see faults in the canopy for example but in my experience when you get them installed and seen against the detail in the cockpit for example the eye isn't drawn to the little faults that you might find in the mouldings. And I certainly wouldn't go to the length of trying to do any major surgery to uh, rectify those little imperfections. Okay, let's get the uh, side panels on now. So the windows are in, they've had a clean. So we want to get plenty of glue on these boxes because these are what engage with the internal skin here and here. And I want to use tube glue like this because I don't want to be running any extra thin cement in between the inner and outer skins because it could wick down and onto the transparencies which obviously ruin them. The mid-upper turret fairing, which is this part, is another tight fit on the kit. And I've just eased the radius here around the back to enable it to slot in. I'm not actually going to glue that yet because I want to build and test fit the mid-upper turret. Border tell us to glue this at this stage and then just drop the turret in, but I'm not absolutely convinced about that. Uh, so I'm just going to leave that off for the moment, or unglued. This is a blank for a position which sometimes had a ventral machine gun on some airframes. You notice there's a gap here as well that we're going to have to deal with. But uh, I'm not going to do that in this episode. I think that's enough uh, for now. So that's a fairly major step in the construction of this kit getting the fuselage assembled uh, and that's really because there's lots of pitfalls as you've seen potential pitfalls 
uh, where the border model's instructions don't really help us. Now one potential pitfall of building the model the way I have uh, is if you're aware of how it all goes together, you've got the kit and you've tried to build it, you might be thinking that these Bombay side panels won't fit in now uh, because they do have some more of these box keys in them. But there is enough clearance and there's enough flexibility in the part to be able to fit them afterwards. So you can get them to drop in afterwards. So uh, that's not a problem. What we've now got to do is fit out all the ribs along the side and there's a little bit more detailing to do on the Bombay which we'll uh, probably tackle next time out. Okay so that's the fuselage together and I'm pretty uh, relieved to get that done to be honest. It's an area that uh, could cause all sorts of trip ups if you're not careful and I suppose the main learning point for me is you've got to make sure that you do test fitting at every single stage and make sure that uh, the sequence that you adopt whichever it is I'm not saying that you have to go with the one that I've done uh, you've got to make sure that the sequence isn't going to lock you out and as I mentioned in the video the fit of the model is very precise so if something doesn't go you've got something wrong somewhere in the build and you need to find out what that is before you commit to cement. So uh, I'm going to put this uh, to one side for a couple of weeks now. Uh, as I said, that's a big step out of the way. Uh, I've got the uh, Itella 132 scale tornado to do some more work on. That's on the bench to my right over here. So that'll be the next uh, video coming up on the channel, which is uh, part six, I think, of the tornado build. And I've also got another couple of projects which I'm busy with for my Patreon channel as well. So if you've got the kit, I know there are a lot of these in stashes around the country and around the world for that matter. And really it's a shame that more of them don't get built. Uh, you do see one or two at the shows, but not enough for the number that must have been sold over the years since it's been available. So uh, I'll leave it there for the moment and sign off uh, for this video. In the meantime, everybody, look after yourselves. Enjoy your modelling if that's what you're doing. And I'll see you soon. Bye for now.